Hallelujah means God be praised. You know, maybe today you are feeling fearful. You feel like you just don't have any faith. Well, I would like to make a suggestion. Instead of focusing on whatever it is that's making you fearful, instead, raise a hallelujah. Remember, raise a hallelujah means praise God. And this I can guarantee you is, when you praise God, if you'll just continue praising Him, that fear will have to flee. So right now, let's raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah, heaven comes to fight for me. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm, louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar, up from the ashes, hope will The King is alive. 
found the following. Courage, justice, power, strength, wisdom, pride, dignity, and authority. I also looked up the land, and here's what I found. Gentleness, innocence, and purity. You know, these are what we find in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who is both the lion and the lamb, perfection and perfect balance.
Jesus Christ is our way maker, and he is working at all times, even when we can't see him and even when we can't feel him. Um, today he is in our darkness, and also he will heal our troubled heart if we'll only surrender to him. Even when I 
says that God is good. So it's not just what he does, but it's also who he is. And the great thing is that who he is never changes. In Psalm 46, 1, the psalmist says, God is our refuge and strength, a present help in times of trouble. Oh, mm-hmm. 
bring suffering Lord I will remember what Calvary has fought for me both now and forever God you're so study God's Word together. I'll get you to find a book of the Bible that's, that's pretty easy to find. If you open most Bibles up to about the middle, you're going to find Psalms. So we're going to be in Psalm 1, so the very first chapter, the very first Psalm, the very first verse of it is where we're going to spend some of our time today. If you find that, um, you'll be ready. So Psalm, the book of Psalm, chapter 1, or the first Psalm. Some years ago, I was having a conversation with a a colleague, and um, we were just talking about how that we face struggles. We all face struggles in our lives as Christians. It doesn't matter if it's a, a new Christian or if it's someone who is in ministry, someone who's maybe been a Christian for, for many years. There are no, no exceptions. It is a battle. And then my friend used a term that he kind of used it to sum up pretty much that battle and and why we often fail. Now, it's a very, very technical term, one you're probably not familiar with, so you might want to get a pen and paper handy so you can write it down. He said that he believes the core of why we struggle so much is because, now, are you ready? You ready to write this down? He says, because of our stinking thinking, our stinking thinking. You see, the reality is, if you stop and think about your life, and I, I ponder my own, is that we allow ourselves to think about and ponder and believe and even live our lives based on thoughts and ideas that, that are rubbish. 
their, their thoughts, their things that God's word clearly tells us are lies. And so no wonder, no wonder we struggle to such an extent. No wonder we struggle so much to, to get it right in our Christian walk. And so today, as we conclude our study on uh, burnt, you know, bad habits, burnt, um, we're going to have an opportunity to see if we're guilty of this stinking thinking. So let's open in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as we study your word today, I pray that you would, you would just help us to have our hearts turned to you. We're going to finish what I believe is one of the most practical studies that we have, have covered in some time. One that I know has um, the truths in this study have had and are continuing to have a big impact on my own life. And so help us to, to focus, help us to listen carefully, help us to allow these truths to, to speak into our hearts. As always, help me to speak clearly and accurately to the text of your word. We pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Now, as I said in the first study of, of our series, these are, these are ideas, these are points and, and concepts that God has helped me to learn over, over the years in my own life. And they are made up with this acronym, BURNT, um, each letter representing a different point in this, these steps, we could call them, that we, we need to follow in our lives. And so I'll just quickly review over the three you've already seen, and today we're going to see the final two in our study. So the B in BURNT, of course, stood for um, Bible, God's Word, or bread, and I, and I won't take the time again to go over that, that amazing story that we've referred to several times now of what happened during World War II and, and just how that bread was just the, the life-giving thing to these individuals and, and, and helped them to have peace within. The, point, the question is this, what are you holding on to in your life? What are you holding in your mind? What is it that you are, are focusing on throughout your day, day in, day out? What's the backdrop in your mind? That's the question. So what is the bread? And if at this point in the study you have not yet found that verse of Scripture, that even if it's a part of a verse, even if it's just a few words that is your focus during the day, that you've memorized, that you're constantly going back to, then that's the first thing you need to do is to Find that B, find that, that, that verse of Scripture, that truth to hold on to. The next letter, of course, in burnt is the letter U. And that, of course, we saw stands for unrelenting. In this process, in this battle, as is, as is the case in any war that's ever fought, it's the same maybe to, a, not maybe, absolutely to a greater extent in our spiritual journey We've got to be unrelenting or we will not win the battle because it is a serious battle going on. So how is your commitment level to having victory? We've got to be unrelenting. And then the letter R, as we saw, stood for remember or maybe more practically reminders that we need to set up in our life to, to bring our, our mind throughout the day. These are not just a daily reminder, but daily reminders throughout the day to, to take us back to that truth and, and make sure that we're bringing our thoughts to the truth and not to lies. We'll talk about that some today. So today we're going to finish the study with the last two letters, of course, N and T. So let's, let's look at the letter N. What does that stand for? Well, N stands for setting new habits. Setting new habits, or as we'll see in a moment, even neurons, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment where that fits in. You see, here's the thing. New habits are possible. New habits are possible. One of the most defeating obstacles that I believe we will face in our lives as, as human beings, certainly as Christians, is that we will, we, will, we will strive to defeat these areas of sin in our life, and yet our mind will in a very powerful way tell us that we can't, that we cannot break old habits, that we cannot change. And um, that's, that's a very, just, it's just a, it's a mentality that just brings us to a, to a standstill. And the, the truth is that that would be true if it were not for the power of the Holy Spirit that lives within us. One of many verses that help us to understand this are Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. This is a verse that we refer to. Often, I believe, as Christians, to just to remind ourselves of the power that's available through God, but I think we kind of missed the main point. If you look at it here, it says, Now to him, speaking of God, of course, 
who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think. But notice this is according to the power at work within us. And so that power that, yes, can accomplish things beyond our wildest imagination is the power of God working within us. And and it's good to remember that. I had asked you when we began if you would find Psalm, Psalm 1. So if you've got that passage, you're ready to roll. And so Psalm 1, verse 1, begins this way. It says, blessed is the man. And, And I want to stop there with that phrase for just a moment. Because as is often the case, the English language does not, is, is not able to do justice to the original languages in which God's word was written. Here, the Hebrew language, this word blessed in Hebrew is actually in the plural form. Now, you can't, you can't do that in English. I mean, what would that be if you tried to make blessed, blessed plural? It would be something like blessedness. It's just, you can't do it. But the point it's, it makes is that this word blessed, there in Psalm 1, verse 1, is it's an exclamation. It's a very powerful exclamation saying something like, oh, how incredibly blessed is the man, is this man. Um, the Holman Christian Standard Bible translates, is it this way? How happy is the man? So, so we need to understand, first of all, that this person is in a very wonderful state. Now, why is that? Well, let's keep reading. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scoffers. You see, this man is the man who we want to be. This is who we want to be. And notice, and I, and I won't unpack this completely because just, there's just not time for it. But in this, this part of the verse, there's, a, there's a, a progression, downward progression here. Here is the person who's not walking the right path. And so first of all, they are, they're walking in the counsel of the wicked. It's as if they're, there's the temptation. There's the wrong direction. They're just kind of walking around it. You know, they're, they're kind of in that vicinity of it. They're in a dangerous place. They're checking it out. Then it says, nor stands in the way of sinners. So now they're not just kind of roaming around. They, they've stopped. And they stood there in that dangerous spot. And then the last step, it says, nor sits in the seat of the scoffers. Now they're not only just standing, they've sat sat down. They've placed themselves there. And see, that is the opposite direction in which we want to go. So it's a downward progression. But how does he arrive here in the right place? Well, verse 2 says, but... See, here's here's the success part. But his delight is what? In the law of the Lord... And on his law, he meditates weekly. Is that what it says? No. Daily. No, it says day and night. In other words, exactly what we're, we're talking about here in this study. This man who is so is blessed, who is in this wonderful state where we would like to find ourselves, is the man who takes the effort to meditate on God's word constantly throughout his day. You know, that B, that, that Bible, that 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 phrase, whatever it is, that is his meditation throughout today. That, that's him. So who is he? Someone with, with great powers? No, except for the fact that he has the Holy Spirit within him. He is the person who keeps his focus on God's Word. Question, is that you? Is that you? Is that me? That's the question. And then verse 3, and we'll just read that far in the first psalm. Here's what he's like. Here's what we can be like. He is like, it says, a tree planted by streams of water. So there's the tree right there next to the streams of water. So it always has its source of of water that yields its fruit in its season. So it's producing what a tree is meant to do. It's producing its fruit and its leaves do not wither. And all that he does, he prospers. And so that point is just made so clearly that this person who is blessed is the person who keeps his focus on God's word all throughout the day. And that person then is blessed in all that he does. And it's such a, it's such a wonderful word picture for us there. Um, as you notice, when I first showed you the word, the letter N, there was another word there that I mentioned. And strangely enough, as, as I said, that word is neurons. Neurons. 
So why are we talking about neurons here? Well, for several reasons. For, for some of the more maybe scientific among us, and really all of us who learn better by being able to picture something, which I think is probably about all of us, the word neurons might help. Back in the, the 1940s, Donald Hebb appears to be the first to popularize a theory which is still today believed to be a, a very good way to understand how our complex brains work. And it's been called the, the Hibbian theory. And, and a key th thought that comes out with, with it is this thought that um, cells that fire together, wire together. Now, what's that talking about? Well, as you, could, as you could guess, the technical details of it are just that. They're very deep. They're very technical, beyond my understanding and probably beyond the understanding of most of us. But one author summed it all up this way, and I find this very helpful. He wrote this. In short, Hebe's idea was that when one brain cell or neuron fires, in other words, when we think a thought, this is basically what that's saying, it has a positive effect on nearby neurons such that they become wired together in a neural network. He went on to explain this. The more the behavior that caused the original linking occurs, in other words, the more we think that thought or carry out a certain action, the stronger, now notice this, the stronger the network grows, making future behaviors of the same kind easier. It's why practice makes perfect when it comes to sports, musical ability, or other areas of life, and when it comes to resisting temptation. This fits in, as you can picture. Yielding to temptation, the more we yield, the easier it is to yield. Resisting temptation, the more often we resist, the more the easier it is to resist temptation. And of course, the thoughts in our minds if we continue to meditate on those biblical truths, the greater it is to continue to do that and to follow that biblical pattern. Speaking of linking, this uh, Hebean idea links together really our burnt acronym thus far. Once again, we have the B. You've got to have your, your truth. You have got to, if you have not done this, you, you must do this. And, and don't live another day without doing this. Seriously, I beg you to have, first of all, that truth. And then what have you got to be? You've got to be unrelenting with it. You've got to, and, and this, this, this point about this, this, these neurons linking helps us to see the value in that. We've got to continue to think that thought, that truth of God's word. And the more we focus on that and God's truth, the easier it is to focus that way. And then the R, you know, remembering. We've got to set something in place. Not just saying, well, I've got to remember that. No, we've got to set things in place that will cause us to remember. We talked about this last time, how we tend to forget, and so we've got to be proactive about setting up things to remember. And then this, um, this new letter, the letter N, new habits are possible. Once again, our minds, Satan, they will lie to us and say, you, know, you can't do this anyway. You, you can't change. You're just always going to be that way. That's not true. The power of God and the power of His Word can allow us to change. And now we're ready to finish our acronym with that last letter, the letter T. And so T stands for thoughts, as you might guess. And, and this phrase, tackle your thoughts. Tackle your thoughts. I really cannot emphasize this enough, how important this is in our lives. I'm going to try to illustrate that as we, as we look at T. <clears throat> this takes us back now to what we began with, with that stinking thinking, all right? We referred to that in the beginning. We have got to, folks, we have got to constantly keep vigilant watch over our thoughts, evaluating whether they are thoughts on truth or whether they are thoughts on lies. Uh, a great verse, Jesus Christ said these words himself, John chapter 15, verse 5. This, I think, really applies a lot to this thought. Jesus said, I am the vine... You are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and that's a, that's a present active participle in the Greek language, which means it's continual action. So not, it means whoever continues to abide in me, whoever continues to keep his focus on me, whoever continues to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, whoever continues to, to, to draw his attention to me. He says, whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that, bears much fruit. You see the connection with Psalm 1. 
For apart from me, notice this, apart from me, you can do nothing. You can do nothing. And so once again, we see it emphasized, that focus, our thoughts. And I just want to say this right now as clearly as I can. If you or, or if I, if we are not willing to be diligent in maintaining our thought life, then, you know, if our thoughts are, st- are stinking, then our life is going to be stinking. It's, it's just there is no way around that. I want you to imagine something with me. And, and most of us here in Napier, most of us going to Bay Baptist Church can picture this very well. Imagine that you're going to travel up the Napier Taupo Road because you're going to go north. Now, if you live here in Hawks Bay, if you want to go north, that's always your most direct option. may not always be the best option. Sometimes it's closed by snow during the winter. There are other ways to go north, but, but all of them are much less direct, as you know, living here in Hawks Bay. But we also know that the Napier Taupo Road in itself isn't some, in some ways the greatest direction to travel because it's, it's a bit of a, of a dangerous road in ways. It's a two-lane road for its entire duration. It is a, a mountain pass road. It climbs an elevation considerably as you travel up it. Um, it's a curvy road. They, over, over the years, they've taken some of the most dangerous curves out, but there's still a, a lot of curves in it. Um, so I want you to imagine that you are traveling up the Napier Tapo Road one night um, in heavy rain, and you're traveling at 100 kilometers an hour because that's legal to do on that road, although maybe not always the wise, especially under these conditions. And all of a sudden, you come around a bend in the road and to see that a tree, a large tree, has just fallen across the road. And so you do what comes natural. You slam on the brakes, locking up the brakes, which puts you into a skid, sending you off the road over a cliff, which are common there on the Napier Tapper Road, to your death. Now, we could say that our foot and the, bra- the, our foot and the brakes help to cause a catastrophe leading to our death by doing some stinking thinking. Okay? In other words, our brakes did stinking thinking because you see, and we did too in, in the process because most of us understand this, when you lock up your brakes, when you hit your brakes so hard that you lock them up, you actually lose traction, which is counterproductive, counterproductive and it actually makes the situation worse. Now, the question though is what can save our life in this situation. Well, we've obviously got very short time to bring our car to a stop. If we just plow ahead and and run into the tree at full speed or even at any high speed, that's going to kill us also. So what what do we do? Well, today, most of our cars are are equipped with anti-stinking thinking braking. Okay, well, not really. It's not called that. But it's actually called ABS braking. And some of you are aware, aware of it. ABS stands for Anti-Lock Braking System. And this system has, over the years since it was invented, saved many lives. Um, doing, though, here's the point of all this, this Anti-Lock Braking System saves lives by doing the very thing that God is asking us to do with our thinking, okay? Anti-Lock Brakes can adjust and correct the braking as fast as 15 times per second. And so what happens, to to explain it a bit more, is as we come upon a situation in which we have to apply our brakes with force, this this computer system in our car, if you have anti-lock braking, it adjusts the braking power to all four wheels in split-second timing. If one wheel begins to break traction, then it slowly it backs off the braking pressure to where that wheel can then, that tire can then grab the road again. It does this in milliseconds, keeping our car from losing traction, keeping us from skidding, and can thus save our life. Um, you see, the thing is this, though, and, and I think I don't have to tell you this, you know this, our human brains can make decisions and can make corrections much more quickly than the most advanced ABS system will ever do. And here's the thing, though. If we will allow them to, and if we will train them to, and here's the thing, and, and, and this brings me to a quote which has got to be one of, the, one of my favorite quotes from anything that I have read. Beverly and I reading this book together, and this quote, you know, I've memorized it. It just stands out because it is, I think it's a great quote. And here it is. I'll put it on the screen. 
And, and many of you here at Bay Baptist are familiar with this quote, because it's not the first time I've used it, but the quote goes like this. Think the thought you would think if you trusted God's promises completely. Now, let's, let's break that down a minute, because that's only 12 words, but man, does it say a lot. Think the thoughts. In other words, those first three words imply a, a willful control of our thinking, a willful governing, evaluation that is taking place in our thinkings. If we're going to think the thoughts, we have to choose the thoughts. So think the thoughts that you would think if, pivotal word here and very important, if you trusted God's promises completely. So what this is saying is simply this. That in our lives, we need to be constantly, vigilantly evaluating our thinking. And, and we need to immediately reject any thoughts that we would not think if at that very moment we had God's promises before us and we were completely believing every one of those promises. Now, just think for a moment. Think about the thoughts that you and I have allowed to be in our minds, to not, not just come in, but to, to park there and remain there, maybe all day long, that contradict God's words. And let me just give you three short phrases and three verses. There are literally thousands and thousands we could put on the screen. But here's three that I think give you the point, such as this one. Do not be anxious about anything, Philippians 4, 6. Okay, so when we find ourselves worrying, bringing in thoughts in that we're allowing ourselves to worry and stress over, we are not fulfilling that statement, right? Because we're, we're allowing thoughts that contradict God's promises. Be, do not be anxious about anything. And then the next one, Hebrews 13, 5, where Jesus says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. How many of our thoughts, how many of the, the attitudes and the, that, that, that go on within us are totally against this? We're not believing the promise at that moment in time that God gave us, that Jesus said he is always with us. If we were really believing that at that moment, we wouldn't be having the thoughts we're having. And then another one, Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ. All those times that we feel we allow ourselves to have defeated type thoughts. Now, I'm not saying, and this, this not, does not mean we can do anything we want to do. It means we can accomplish anything that God desires that we accomplish. And these are just three examples of how we need to govern our minds. Here's a, here's a verse that is it's one of my favorite verses in God's Word, and I think it is God's way of saying what Tommy Newberry said in that quote. So I'll put it on the screen along with the quote. It's Isaiah 26, verse 3. I know a verse many of you are familiar with. It says, you, speaking of God, you keep him, me or you, you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. In other words, it's, what we're talking about is focused on him. But there's even a bit more in the verse that says, because he trusts in you. That's a great way of how the Bible endorses what, what was written in this book. Think the thoughts you would think if you trusted God's promises completely. You keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, because he trusts in you. If we would just adopt that principle in our lives, how it would change us, but it requires effort. It requires effort. So you see, what we need to understand is we don't have to keep losing the battle in our Christian walk. We don't have to lay our heads on our pillows at night with regrets from the day, thinking that, oh, blew it again. I can never get victory there. I'm not saying we are going to ever reach the point of sinless perfection until we get to heaven. I'm not saying that. But, but you do know what I'm saying here with these battles that we, we continue to, 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 to blow it in over and over. It doesn't have to be that way. We can have victory. God promises that. We can actually, we, and we talked a lot about this last week, we can actually experience a closer and a closer and a deeper walk with Jesus Christ in our lives. We can set that as a goal. And we can know and... and, and and see how that at the end of this year, we have a closer relationship with Jesus Christ than how we began the year. That, these things are all possible. And BURNT, that acronym will help us with that as we look at these letters. First of all, again, in, in final review, be the Bible. That, that, that piece of bread that we're holding on to. What are you holding on to? 
if you, if you don't have it, if you don't have that, that, that truth from God's word, that, and once again, just a quick review here. How do you find it? What do you look for? It's simple. Find where you're struggling and find a verse that relates to that, a verse that responds to that, either in stopping the behavior, starting the right behavior, find that verse. That's B. And then you, you got to be unrelenting. We just know, just know when we begin the journey, it's going to be a battle. There is a spiritual warfare going on with, with Satan, his demons, and our flesh, the world system. We struggle against all that. It's going to be a fight, and we've got to be unrelenting. We've got to commit to that, using Christ's strength, of course. Or remember. And once again, I'm not just saying, so remember to do it. I'm saying set up reminders, whatever works for you. Like I was talking last week, you know, if it's an app on your phone that 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 makes a that buzzes every hour, I've I found one finally that I like. And I've an app on my phone, and it it brings out a different kind of chime every hour. I know our phones are, are making all kinds of sounds, aren't they? But this one, I, oh, okay, wow, that's right. Yep, that's there's a, there's that one, and it brings me back to bring my thoughts to it. Do something. You got to do something, okay? And then in new habits, we've got to desire and set the plan, set the goal for having new habits. And new habits are possible. It is a lie that we cannot change. It's the truth we cannot change ourselves, but it's a lie that we cannot change because we have the power of the Holy Spirit within us and we have the truth of God's Word on which to base our life. And we talked about those neurons, that the more that we do that, the more we think the correct thoughts, the easier it is to think those thoughts, and the easier it is to, to perform the right behavior. And then that last letter, T, you know, talks about our thoughts. Tackle your thoughts. If you, let me say this, please hear me, please hear me. If you are not aggressively dealing with your thinking, then I can tell you right now, I don't care who you are, where you live, you're losing the battle. We have got to aggressively tackle those thoughts. Our success will depend on how committed we are to these, these steps that we've talked about here in this study. I want to kind of close, really I want to close with an illustration. Um, the same friend who had the stinking thinking idea also shared this illustration with me and I love it. I want you to imagine this because it just, I think, just brings all this together in a very, very powerful way. I want you to imagine that you are living in a city in which uh, kidnapping, with ch- in which children are just being taken from homes everywhere. It's just become rampant. And it has, there's no way the police have been able to stop it. It's taking place. Children are being taken. They're disappearing. Um, many are never seen again. Some are taken into sex trafficking. Some are simply murdered. They're just disappearing. And one night, you're at home with your family. And suddenly you hear this banging on the door. And the person outside, they're, they're trying, obviously, to break down the door. And, and you know what it is. It's finally come to your home, and they're coming to get your children. Now, what are you going to do? Put yourself in that, shoe, th- that position right now. Maybe you're not even a parent. But put your, we can all visualize that. What are you going to do? Are you going to go open the door and say, well, come on in. I mean, I, you, you obviously think this is an important thing to do, and so I guess it's the right thing, so come on in. Here they are. Here's my children. Well, let me get the car seat for you so you can put them in the car. Now, of course not. You're not going to do that. You are going to do everything you can, first of all, to keep that door closed. You're going to put your weight against it. You're going to make sure every lock is closed. You, and if they get through, you may, you, know, you may not be a strong person, you may not have a black belt in karate, but you're going to do everything you can in your ability to keep them from accomplishing the evil desire that they want to accomplish. Right. Now, yeah, but just think with me for a moment. And I want, you to, I want us to see here how foolish really we are in, our, in each of our lives. We're all guilty of this. Because, you see, Satan, in our own confused mind, it, it knocks on the door of our mind, the door of our heart daily, telling us lies, right? Lies which will destroy us, which will destroy our families, which will destroy those we have influence over, lies that will destroy our ability to accomplish the most important task we have on this earth to do. And what do we do? We open the door wide. We listen to the lies we, we, not only do we listen, we believe the lies, even though they're coming 
often from the greatest liar of the universe, Satan himself, and we, we, we listen to them. We, we begin to believe them. We allow those lies to remain in our minds and circle around there maybe all day long. We, we even start living our lives based on those lies, right? If you're, if you're listening, if you're following along with what I'm saying here at all, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And we all are so guilty of this stinking thinking. And folks, it's just as simple. What are we going to do about it? You know, it's our choice. And we do have a choice in this matter. I have a choice. That my day ends the way I allow it, the way I allow it to end. Your day will end the way each day, the way you allow it to end. We as Christians, sadly not those without Christ, but we as Christians have the ability to change this. And so I, I urge us as I close right now, I urge us to commit today that we are going to, to follow these steps. So it, does, it doesn't have to be the acronym you use. I think these are some of the, fi- the primary principles, though, in this burnt acronym. But I urge us, as we close just now, I urge us to commit that we are going to take these steps, that we are going to do them, not just know them, we're going to do them, that we are going to slam the door shut on those lies that come into our mind, and we are going to determine instead to meditate on, to believe, to follow God's truth. Let's close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as we we close not only this this study today, but as as we close this series, I know how you have taught me personally that that contained in what we've studied are some of the greatest keys to our Christian walk, our Christian victory. I pray that for each one of us hearing these, that we just, Father, stir our hearts, that we, that we can't walk away from this without taking it seriously and without applying these truths to our life. I pray for those that are here right now who, who really are, are helpless in this battle because they do not have Christ in their lives. If that's you, I urge you, Just now, I urge you to turn your life over to Jesus Christ. There is no other way to live life. There is no other way to face eternity without Him. If you've never made that decision in your life, I urge you right now, you can follow this prayer after me, and you can, if you can mean these words from your heart, you can you can surrender your life to Jesus Christ. You can just pray these words. Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I've done many things to disobey you. I know I could never do enough good things to work my way to heaven. But I believe that Jesus died on the cross and paid for my sins. Today I turn from living life my way and I turn to follow you, Jesus. Please forgive my sins and be my Lord and Savior. Maybe you're listening today and you've made that decision but you know the struggle I'm talking about can we all in this quiet moment commit to putting the effort into victory here as we've learned in this study right now let's make a commitment to that in this quiet moment dear heavenly father as we close we close having covered a very somber and serious study but we close with joy in rejoicing, knowing that it is you we serve. You are the victor. Jesus Christ, you have conquered sin in the grave. Through you, we can have victory. And so we close in praise to you. In Christ's name, amen. I'd urge you, if you've made a decision in any way um, through this study, that you'd contact us. The information is on our website. Contact us and let us know so we can help you in that journey.